Hi, my name is Seth Ladd and welcome to this episode of Dart Tips. Today we continue our tour of the fundamentals of functions by looking at functions as objects, nested functions, functions as arguments, and lexical closures. Get ready for more functional tips about functions in Dart right now. Let's get started. Dart is a true object-oriented language, so even functions are objects. This means functions can be assigned to variables, passed as arguments to other functions, and more. To start, check this out. Function is defined in the core library as an abstract class. This means there is a function type, and a function value is a subtype of the function class. Just like you can assign objects to variables, here's an example of assigning a function object to a variable. Notice how you can call the loudify variable just like a normal function. You can also assign an anonymous function directly to a variable like this. You might use this technique if you want to retain a handle on the function so that, for example, you can add or remove it from some collection. Now that you know you can treat functions as objects, you can start to do some even more fun things. Here's an example of filtering a list of numbers down to only even numbers and then printing them all out. This works because for each wants to be passed a single function that takes a single argument. Print just so happens to be a function that takes a single argument. Ta-da! Building on this example, let's say you need to filter on a complicated condition. You could write the code this way, but yuck, that's a big complicated chunk of code in the middle of an otherwise pretty line. Surely we can do better. Thanks to Dart's support for nested functions, yes we can. Here's an example. Much better. Notice how we can create a new named function inside of main, which itself is a function. The complicated check function is a nested function. The where for each chain is now much easier to read. You can define your own functions that take functions as parameters. Here's an example. Notice how the second parameter is annotated as the type function. This code works, but it doesn't tell you much about what the filter function should expect in terms of arguments or what it should return. All we know is that it's a function. We generally recommend that you use type annotations for the functions you expect as arguments. Here's an example. Notice how in this example it's clear that filter should return a bool and should take a single parameter, ideally of type int. Now, with this extra type information, tools like Dart Editor can give better warnings if you try to pass in a filter that doesn't match the description. Before we tackle our last topic, let's review Dart's scoping rules. Dart is a lexically scoped language, which means that the scope of variables is determined statically simply by the layout of the code. I like to think of lexical scope as follow the curly braces outwards. Here's an example of nested functions with variables at each scope level. Notice how nested function can access variables at every level all the way up to the top level. Dart's scoping rules are very easy to reason about. It's very much what you see is what you get. Dart's lexical scope even works with this, but we'll cover that in an episode about classes. Now that we've looked at lexical scope, let's take a look at functions as closures. A closure is a function object that has access to variables in its lexical scope, even when the function is used outside of its original scope. Closures are popular in other scripting languages like JavaScript, and Dart is no stranger to lexical closures. Here's an example of a function that closes around its variable. Notice how make adder has a nested function named adder that adds two numbers. Make adder's parameter, addBy, is lexically visible to adder. Then make adder returns the function object adder, which at that moment creates a closure. So far, so good. Let's use make adder to create a new adder, in this case, the function add2. Calling add2 function with one returns, you guessed it, three. This is lexical closures in action because add2 closes around addBy, whose value was originally passed to make adder. To really drill this point home, notice how you can create more adders with make adder, each one not affected by the other. Here's an example of making an adder that adds 100. Notice how add 100 is independent of add 2. Dart's support for lexical scope and lexical closures really helps you compose your functions and apps. The better the composure, encapsulation, and reusability, the better the code. Thanks for watching this episode. My name is Seth Ladd, and as we say here on Dart Tips, stay sharp. Click here to subscribe to our channel for more episodes of Dart Tips. We appreciate any thoughts you might have for the series. Please leave them in the comments below. And if you have any additional questions about Dart, please drop by Stack Overflow, where Dart experts are standing by to help you out. See you next time.